Hey everybody, Gary here with Guitar Tricks, and in this video, I want to share some tips for how to lighten your touch on the guitar, and I'm also going to talk about why that's so important. So one thing that a lot of older musicians and older guitar players and older beginners struggle with is pressing far harder than they have to on the guitar, and it weighs down your hands, it causes fatigue faster, it makes your notes go out of tune. So let's take a D chord, for example. That's a D chord that's in tune. Before we get into it, please go ahead and click subscribe so that you get all of the latest and greatest content from Guitar Tricks. And if you wanna be notified of any new lesson, be sure to tap the bell and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see in future lessons. That's where we're always looking for ideas. If I press too hard, watch, it's gonna go out of tune. Now, maybe you hear that it's out of tune, maybe you don't. But what happens is when you press down on this note, see how it changes the pitch? It goes sharp. Right? So especially with lighter gauge strings and jumbo frets, this becomes even more of an issue. It's very obvious. When you have more flat frets, big strings, you're kind of protected a little bit more, but it still happens all the time. So the guitar is hard enough to keep in tune, hard enough to keep intonated to begin with. So by pressing unevenly with your fingers on a chord, you're just making matters worse. So you always want to have even pressure and as little pressure as possible to press the strings down. You also want to always aim to have your fingers just right behind the fret wire. Like it's just your fingertips just sitting up against the fret wire. By doing so, that allows you to press softer. So if I put as minimal pressure to get this note to ring out, and then I keep that pressure and back up my finger, it starts to buzz. You see that? It's just law of physics because now the string is going more on, you know, it's going on an angle up to the bridge. So by grabbing it right behind the fret, I'm grabbing it higher up on that angle trajectory, right? Where here, in order to get it to still touch that fret, I've got to press further to get it to touch that fret. So I've got, uh, again, an intonation issue and a buzzing issue and a finger pressure issue. So always aim to get right behind the frets. Think about like violin players, for instance, they literally have to play in one very tiny spot to get the right note or else they're out of tune. So take that challenge, take that cue from a strings player that doesn't have frets and try to get used to playing right behind that fret. Okay, so another tip is to just take a note Let's again just take this second fret of the high E string and experiment with just picking it with, you know, a nice uh, light pick. How little do you actually have to press on the string, right? We want to develop really fine awareness of pressure in our fingers, right? We want to have like real subtle control. So we're going to experiment. Think like one to 10. So start with with uh, like zero. So I'm literally touching it so soft that I'm not fretting it, right? And now try to find a one. Okay, there we go. I'll say one, it's slightly buzzing still. Okay, now two. Two is perfect right there. Three, pressing a little harder. Four, a little harder. Five, a little harder. Six, I'm starting to go sharp. I can hear it. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hertz. <laughs> right? So there's this subtle spectrum of pressure. So experiment with just getting that one to two. Where, where just getting it to ring out. And then it mutes a little bit. And you'll be amazed at how little pressure you actually need. Do it with a few different fingers. Let's just do it on frets two, three, four, and five on that high E string. So I'm playing with going from buzzing to not buzzing. Right? 
right? I'm seeing where does the buzz turn to no buzz. Right? Releasing all tension. So no tension, no gripping, just a light press. Let's do this. Let's go... Five four three two 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 five four three two. But what I just want you to do, we're gonna do pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger. And as we go down, I want you to just focus on using as little pressure as possible to get the note to ring out. Make sure there's no tension in your elbow, in your forearm, in your wrists, in your fingers just lightly pressing. We're just developing that kinesthetic awareness of a light touch. Here we go. One, two, here we go. Fret five, four, three, two, next string. Now let's go on the way up. I'm gonna close my eyes so that I just have a more acute sense of awareness of how it feels instead of how it looks, right? Don't worry too much about technique. We're just focusing on pressure. Starting now on the second fret of the low E string and going in the other direction. One, two, eyes closed. Okay, let's do it again. I want you to just breathe while you do it. So no tension and just breathing. Now let's start from the top and work our way back down. I'm gonna go eyes closed and just really just breathe and relax. One, two, here we go. Okay, now let's think about the right hand. So if we take, let's say, that second fret of the uh, high E string again, the harder we pick, the more likely the note is going to buzz and the more pressure we need because we're setting that string in motion. So it wants to, it wants to buzz against the strings and it wants to come loose under our finger. So lighter picking means you get to touch lighter. So, you, so if you have a light pick, you could have a light touch. If you have a really heavy pick, right? Here's an example. So with my lightest pick, that note is clear. Now, if I keep that left hand pressure and now I pick really hard, you see that? It started to die. It started to choke out. So... One of the great things about electric guitar is you have the amplifier to work for you, right? The One of the problems with practicing electric guitar without an amplifier is you could barely hear it, so you tend to play harder to hear it. But when you have an amplifier or headphones, turn the volume up and finger pressure down. Experiment with that. This is something I'm always experimenting with. Like, First of all, finding the range of what's the quietest, what's the loudest, where it still sounds good. There's a point of diminishing returns with loud where it just sounds plucky. It doesn't actually get louder. It just sounds worse. So you're trying to find this range of, of touch, soft touch, and volume, soft volume, right? So let's do the same thing with picking now. With the right hand, what's the softest you could pick and still hear the note? Second fret, high E string. Wow. 
wow, I could get really soft. Imagine being in a crowded jazz club. That tends to be where people really listen. Or like an, like a singer-songwriter showcase or something. And everyone, you're making people listen to this. There's something so special when a player is not afraid to play quiet. Okay, now let's think again, scale of one to 10. So this is one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? I could go harder. You know, I guess that's ten. But it's just, unless you're trying to create some, like, I guess, aggressive, kind of harsh sound, you typically are not going to go. But a lot of beginner players, they start at 10, right? Everything's so hard. So practice this softness, soft touch, less effort. With both riffs as the single notes like we just went over, uh, make it just something that you're thinking about every time you're learning something, especially with chords, like I said, because they'll go out of tune if you're pressing too hard. Yeah, you'll find you get less fatigue. A lot of us older players uh, also have arthritis. Maybe you've had it for a long time. It's starting to come on. We get more sore easier, easily, right? So uh, the soft touch thing is going to help all around. Let's say we're learning a riff. Here's a riff I want to teach you. It goes like this. Fifth fret on the D string twice. Then we go to the third fret of the G string, then back to the fifth fret of the D string. So like this. Then we slide five to seven on the G. Then we come back to five on the G, to the three on the G, and then to the three on the D. So the whole riff goes. Okay, let's go one to 10 on that riff. Here's one. Which sounded the best? They sounded totally different. The mood changes, right? The where you're coming from changes based on your dynamics. What if I mix the two together? Watch this. Right? Or <laughs> from like a 10 to a 2. Ended on a 1. <laughs> okay, another thing that I see with players that are pressing too hard is pulling. This like sort of micro bend. Right? This kind of just uh, 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 pulling on the strings. Right? So it's just a light press. It's so light that you can't pull. I can't pull with that amount of pressure. If I have a lot of pressure, you know, then I can pull. 
So if you're pulling the strings, it means basically you're pressing too hard because if you're pressing soft, your finger will just come right off the string. It's not going to pull it down. There's not enough pressure. So that's another thing to be aware of. But typically that's going to slow you down. If you're trying to play something fast, it's pretty much impossible to play fast unless you're relaxed, soft, loose, right? It's just like any sport, you know, any really high performing athlete, when they're in that mode, it's just flow, right? Like there's no tension. It's soft, right? It's fast and explosive, but it's soft. All right, everybody. I hope that lesson was helpful. If you want to learn more about playing guitar, access a library of high quality song lessons with downloadable tab, multiple videos per song, sequential courses on guitar fundamentals, rock, country, blues, fingerstyle guitar, a guitar toolbox with scale finders and chord finders, and all sorts of other cool things. Head over to guitartricks.com. Happy playing, and I'll see you next time.